following is a presentation of TFNN. A presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day from TFNN. <laughs> Sorry about that. Welcome to the July 26th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary day and an extraordinary weekend, an extraordinary life. The easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon, except right now it's just past eight in the morning. So if you're listening on the normal uh, show, I'm going to make this show as pertinent as can be. Of course, if you listen early, I would love to hear from you. So give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, send me an email like Michael did here, an email at steve at tfn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers, then any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to La Show. So here at 8.08 in the morning, you got Dow Equity Futures trading up 82 points, S&P up 8.5, NASDAQ Futures up 30, the Russell up 2 points. Uh, U.S. dollar index is up uh, 9 pennies. Gold's up about 6 bucks, silver 9 cents, and light sweet crude 43 cents. Let's start off by just simply getting a feel for what's going on around the globe out here. Nice thing to do when we start our morning off. And here what we're looking at, the chart on the right-hand side is the FTSE. I'll go ahead and expand it up for you. But just, just short term, shorter term, and taking a look at, you know, where's the, what are the international markets uh, look like compared to the U.S. market? So we take a look at the FTSE. Uh, we can clearly see a current descending. Now, we're look, just looking at closing prices. So most for the most of the day here, uh, morning, we're going to be taking like a candlestick chart just because of how they communicate. But right now, I've just got this set to a line chart, closing prices. Nothing wrong with looking at a chart this way. It actually provides you with plenty of information. You know, you can see on a closing basis this double bottom down here in the FTSE, May 13th and the uh, May 31st time frame. What we can see right now is that currently it is in a descending price channel out there and i just did that just as a line tool you guys can do that as well oops don't know how i did that let's continue let's so that's the footsie let's uh move down here let's take a look at what's going on inside the uh, dax the german dax up 29 points by the way and we can see this little cone of silence so we can see the descending tops and the rising uh, trend line here so market is getting more quiet so to speak on a uh, closing basis, if we come take a look at the, uh, well, here, I'll expand the chart out just so we can take a look at it. You can see the uh, DAX nowhere near its highs from back in 2018, different than obviously U.S. market. That was the same in the FTSE chart, but you saw that. You didn't need me to point that out to you. If we take a look at the Nikkei out here. In the Nikkei, we can see kind of a double, triple top so to speak, out here, right in the 21,750-ish uh, type area. But we also see a little rising trend line. So maybe uh, uh, maybe prices are going to come down and revisit the bottom of that rising trend line. That's the uh, Nikkei over in Japan. Again, nowhere near its highs from back in 2018. 
we take a look at the Hang Seng, see what's going on over in Hong Kong, you see similar patterns to what we just looked at inside the, I believe, the DAX. You see both a rising and a descending uh, trend line out here. So perhaps just quiet markets, very similar to what we've got going on right now in the uh, U.S. But you can see price here in the Hang Seng, nowhere near its highs out here from back in 2018. So much weaker market out there. And the importance of that is understanding, really, this is, this is a visual way, an easy way for you to see where the global flow of capital is going to. It's a way of doing it. It's much easier. We take a look at my charts to take a look at each indice and how they're trading in the major currencies. But you can kind of get the same picture here. If we finish out the international markets or the major international markets that we look at or that I look at, the uh, Shanghai out here, Shanghai, you can see well off of its uh, highs. And you can see just really a uh, descending trend. Really, I could have come back here to the April highs and extended it. So that's what's going on across the globe. Nothing significant that we see, nothing breaking out. Uh, if we take a look at the Dow Equity Futures contract and do the same thing, you can see here our markets in the U.S. substantially different than what's going on overseas. Because we're just looking at the uh, equity futures contract versus the indices. It's why some of my data kind of stops back here in the, uh, um, in the uh, 2018 uh, level, just because we're looking at the uh, September contract which is the current contract. The ES Mini, we've got really the same kind of a uh, pattern out here. In other words, we're, we're up at the highs. You can just simply see the money flowing here into the U.S., the good old U.S. of A. Kind of curious. Here, let me just put the uh, U.S. dollar index uh, on that, where I know I've got that here handy. Let's just uh, take a look at this, see what we've got going on. So in the case of the U.S. dollar index, we can see what we can see really a bunch a series of uh, a bunch of higher lows out here it's just been a series of higher lows um, and uh, really a series of higher highs out here inside the U.S. dollar index. That's going to continue for long periods to come. So that's what's going on. We take a look at what's going on around the globe. Let's try to figure out what's going on inside our markets out here. And to do that, to do that, where should we begin? Let's begin by uh, let's take a look at short term. Since we're since we're dealing with uh, eight thirteen in the morning, we're trying to just get an assessment, a feel for what's going on, where our markets headed to. I know those are the questions you've got at eight fifteen in the morning. You'll you'll have those at one fifteen. I don't know at one fifteen. I'd be looking at the ten minute time frame chart for the ES mini, but here we are now on this uh, 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 chart that we're looking at. On your screen, you see a bunch of uh, green and horizontal lines. You'll see the numbers associated with those. I want you to think of green as you should as resistance. Those green lines represent on a five minute basis the levels where the ES mini, I'm sorry, 10 minute basis, the levels where the ES mini is broken down. Very clear where price is broken down. Now, how do we determine where price is broken down? Here, we're not necessarily staying with the old swing point, the, the, the old swing point analysis. Instead, what we're using is a tool developed by uh, Tom DeMarc. It's called the TD Setup. This is part of his other tools out there. But I have found this tool to be extraordinarily useful in helping us to determine when price is breaking out or likely to break out or broken down and likely to break down and price pulling back to resistance its breakdown levels, as well as its breakout areas. Now, it's determined by taking a look at each candle and comparing it to the candle close uh, of the bar four bars before this. And uh, what you look for is nine successive. I want you to think of, actually, this, when we use this tool here, we're taking a look at the sprint, not the marathon. The sprint, not the marathon. And where did that sprint begin? And when you get nine consecutive closes, my system will automatically draw a horizontal line, support or resistance. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. We'll see the key level of support for the ES Mini on a 10-minute basis. Right now is 3,012. You break below that, you head to 3,007. It's that easy. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. If you're listening in and it's 1.18 in the afternoon, uh, the show is actually being recorded at 8.18. Right now, we've got the ES Mini trading out at 30.13.50 uh, out here. And just looking at a 10-minute chart, the patterns that you and I use out here, they work for all time frames. Uh, this just happens to be a 10-minute time frame chart. Again, uh, so so the way that you would uh, use this tool, for those of you that want to use this at home out here and start doing the uh, counts. Uh, so, Let's take a look at resistance lines, 3016 out here. Um, and that uh, occurred back yesterday, looks like at about 1130 or so. I'm not going to worry about the exact times. Uh, you can just see the see the pattern out. There was 1120 actually. 10-minute chart, by the way, that we're looking at. So when price breaks above that, it's a signal that it's a breakout wants to move to higher ground. You've broken, broken above where price uh, previously uh, fell, resistance, uh, where it broke down. However, if we do take a look at uh, now, now you can say, well, why didn't price move up to 3027? You've got to pay attention to the nine counts. That's your sprint. When you get nine successive closes, where the close, in this case here, we're talking to the upside, is above the close four bars earlier. That's where you're just picture yourself sprinting. Picture the market is nothing more than a sprinter, and you're doing the 50 yard dash, you're giving it all you've got. Maybe it's the 100-yard dash, if do they call it the 100-yard dash? I don't even remember out here. But in either event, you get to that ninth bar. If it's a high on bars 8, 9, or the bar following bar 9, you've really got to pay attention. The market will typically either turn, move sideways, a little bit of a burp, um, but you want to be paying attention to it. You can see here that the current high inside of the ES Mini, which took place at about 6, uh, between 630, 640, there was your nine count. And now price is pulling back to support. 
This is just on a 10 minute basis. 3012 may hold. That's normal for price to come back and test it. If price falls below that, we don't and we have a nine count going on to the downside. We're only in bar number two potentially out here. And you have to have those nine consecutive closes. My system's not gonna count bars one and two. It's just gonna show when you have effective nine counts that are in place out here. Uh, so they're really it's really a great tool. So if price falls below 30.12 on a 10 minute basis at 8.20, this is before the market opens, uh, we would anticipate that price will pull back to the next breakout level. That's 3,007 out here. And again, you can do this for all time frames. That was the 10 minute, you might say, 10 minutes way too fast for me. What are the 30 minute time frames show out here? I also have my roads momentum indicator tool. Uh, those are where you see the black diagonal lines drawn when you see those. That's telling you that the market is stretched, but there's a whole series of of uh, there's a whole series of steps uh, in order for that pattern to enact itself uh, to confirm itself out here uh, you can see when the markets were making a low on a 30 minute uh, basis here yesterday at one o'clock you can see price was moving lower doing less relative energy uh, that's that uh, rose momentum indicator pattern bar eight was the low on that 30 minute uh, time frame bar nine was a hammer candle confirming everything i know it's not displayed here but that's what was actually formed um uh, so right now you've got resistance at 30.23 on a 30 minute basis and really support between the 3004, 3006. We're going to really call it 3004 area. Again, you can do this for all time frames. Uh, here is your daily time frame. We can see once price inside the ES mini got above 29.38. You know, it was indicating to us that it wanted to move higher. As far as where we're at right now on a daily basis for the ES Mini, we're in bar number three of that count. But we can all see that price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. Those will typically lead to some type of pullback support here. The breakout level for the ES Mini is 27.44 out there. So. One of the tools that I use, just thought we would take a look at it from a short-term time frame. Let's go to a couple of questions that have come in. First, let's go to the ones that uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, uh, Michael H. had sent in a question. And his question, let me get my, my tools all set here, get to the proper spots. And he wants to take a look at a couple of different equities, two stocks. He says, gapped up yesterday. Uh, the first one is ABEV, that's Ambev. And uh, I believe Nokia is the other one. Since I don't have TAS profiles yet, uh, how should I find entry points? Well, your entry points are not necessarily going to be based upon profiles. What he's referring to, folks, now here's our daily and our weekly and our monthly view. And you're going to see horizontal lines here. These are different horizontal lines than the ones that we looked at. These horizontal lines um, are also terrific for identifying uh, what otherwise would be invisible levels of support or resistance. You're not necessarily going to see these at swing points either. And they help us to understand in kind of like the game of of war, so to speak, you know, where the other side's sitting, where their front lines are at, and that's going to be the top or the bottom. So on these charts here, that's going to be either the green, which is the top, uh, the green, which is the bottom, or the red, which is the uh, top. And then you've got one more line. That's the center. And that's the uh, blue or cyan colored line out there. And those levels help us understand where both. So at the top, in essence, that is where sellers are located. The bottom, that is where buyers are located. If you can overcome sellers, then it says you, you've overcome resistance. You want to move to higher price out there. These tools, the, the, the task market profiles are, are really like the... Um, Really, I consider them to be the virtual first down markers uh, in, in, and, uh, you know, in playing football out here. So we really can't, Michael, use the, the TAS market profiles to identify tops or bottoms, just simply to identify support and resistance. And when that center line is closer to the bottom as it was in AMBEB on the daily basis, it says that uh, there's really strong support because there's more sellers lined up between 463 and 467. It says what I, Stevie likes to term as a bullish structured uh, profile. Now, price has taken out its prior high. I'm referring to AMBEV. That had 27 million shares from July 7th. Just looking at the daily time frame, yesterday was 53 million. That would be what we use to call a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside pattern out here. Now, the small A to B equals CD looks like this. Your question was, though, how should I find an entry point? 
this is run away. Now, just because we have confirmed A to B equals CD patterns doesn't mean they work 100% of the time. And in this case here, the one-to-one -one level on the small pattern just simply takes you to 522. That's on AMBEB out there. Uh, as the way that in, in small, I'm just really coming back to a prior swing point, which would be July 2nd, moves higher into July 11th, makes a retracement down into uh, two days ago. It was a 0.786. It was really 73% retracement. But the way that this pattern completes an A to B equals CD, the, it, you're paying attention to the D point. A, B, C, D becomes our projection level. And, and when you're moving into the D point with a wide-ranging bar, and yesterday was a wide-ranging bar, gaps are our friends, you mentally have to draw in that gap color because if you if you turn this into a real wide ranging bar which in essence is what it is it's really not how markets end and it's not how the d points are typically made so it looks to me like uh, a b e v ambev is headed up to 536 554 now that's the, the i mentioned there's 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 at least there's several there's there's two um so that's not several but there are uh, two a to b equal cd here's the larger one that we'll put out there We'll pull this over. And so the larger one, well, let me just do this. Let me just delete the small one. There we go. So the larger one says this thing could be running up to 581 out there. You're looking for an entry point. Now, the only caution sign right now, and I don't know how it will end here because it doesn't have to end, but yesterday's move higher out here uh, showed or triggered a Rhodes Momentum indicator uh, top, but that can go away by price continuing to move higher and pick up its uh, relative strength out there. But no other topping patterns that I see. Let's just do a quick wave count before we go to the uh, breakout here. And it made wave seven. Hey, we'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Thanks for listening. If you're listening at 1.30, the show is actually being recorded at 8.30. We're taking a look at uh, a ticker symbol, ABEV, for uh, Michael. And uh, so one of the things, Michael, so you're looking for an entry price. And, and the only entry price here would be trying to chase this or trying to take this to the short side. Uh, with yesterday's gap to the upside, I wouldn't recommend that. But we do have two potential topping signals out here uh, for ABEV. Uh, one is wave number seven, that count. That's letter G on my screen. The second is just recognizing recognizing that yesterday's move higher uh, was with less relative energy out there. So always worth paying attention, but you need to see a bearish reversal signal out here. Otherwise, I'd be telling you to chase it. I can't tell you to chase it with those two patterns in play. Um, is that's what we see when we take a look at the daily time frame. When we look at the weekly time frame out here, Michael, just to get some type of perspective, we can see, see how this closes this week. You can see it's up at resistance. Now, how do we know that? Here you've got a weekly shooting star back in, um, when was that? That looks like uh, February 8th. 2019, you've got a little dark cloud cover back in the week of July 12th out here. So we know we're up towards resistance. Now, look, if price can close over, I would typically say that shooting star high. That price point, by the way, is 510. It would say, OK, you've got a change in um, a, uh, probably a change in uh, in trend out here. Um, with the, with price potentially moving higher on a weekly basis, the target would be that green horizontal line at the 735. That's where price really broke down. You can see the road's momentum indicator bottom pattern out here that was forming as it's made a low on a weekly time frame. See how the week closes. Uh, but again, you're just trying to chase things, and you're up at resistance, so not a good time to be looking at a uh, time to enter. Here's a monthly chart. We we spent the early session, the morning session, the first session, uh, taking a look at that TD setup nine count pattern. Pattern. On a monthly basis, that's what formed the bottom way back here in 2016. It formed the high in 2018. There's no count that's underway as we speak right now. So the other symbol that you wanted to take a look at was Nokia. Uh, N-O-K is the uh, ticker symbol. Again, there, it gapped up. You're looking for entry points. It's, it's, uh, Nokia right now is likely, this is, uh, take a look at prices above daily, weekly, and it's traded in the center of its monthly profile. So it says it closed above uh, 575. We'll call it, what is the actual number? 570, 570. Um, it should run to 649. But in looking at the daily time frame, let's go see what charts it has out here. It looks like 584 is its next resistance point. That's where price broke down. So it should be able to get to that level. If it can clear that, then 634 would become its price target out there. If I look at a weekly time frame chart for uh, Nokia, it formed a bottom with that TD setup nine count. You see how value we can see the top form with the TD setup nine count out here. Uh, really nice weekly bar that's underway says 641 becomes the uh, target. So so really, Michael, the answer to your question, where was the entry point on on on, on these uh, uh, equities that you're looking at, really it's the, the the nine count that is helping you to identify those tops and bottoms. So utilize that for the different um, equity symbols that you are uh, looking at out there. So I don't see any entry points inside of, uh, for you, Nokia, or, or even though they may be moving higher, you know, you're running after, I'd rather you buy bottoms and sell tops and go ahead and consider using that TD setup uh, nine count to help you do that. Uh, Earl wrote in and Earl says, Hey, Steve. Hey, Earl. Using seasonal timing, will a fall pullback reach a correction level down 10% from the high? Yeah, you know, I don't. First of all, 
What we need, Earl, is we need to have confirmed uh, tops out there, and we just don't we just don't have that. What do you mean by confirmed tops? Well, here, if we take a look at the ES Mini as an example, we can see one of those topping patterns. Uh, or there's two that are present at the uh, moment. There's one that's already in essence that is in place. That's the Rose Momentum Indicator signal. Uh, that took place right here. That was confirmed on July 16th. It had follow through the very next day. That high, by the way, from July 16th was really tested yesterday and rejected. Uh, and in doing so, went to wave number seven. That's letter G. Now, we won't know until today. That can be a topping uh, uh, or bottoming pattern or signal out here, indicator. Uh, so it's really an indicator that we use. But we can also see price continuing to move higher, doing less relative energy. So you do have the confirmed top out here. But, but Earl, the first thing, the first thing that must take place in order to get a 10% correction is the trend must end. And the trend has not ended out there. Price must close below 29.6950 inside the ES Mini in order for there to be a change in trend. And and I know you say, well, gosh, how, how can you how can you say that with such certainty out there? And the reason I can say that with such certainty, well, the reason I could say it would be I would have to show you the tool that I use that, that just plainly shows that. Let me see if I can find that out here. Where where did I name that? Oh man, what did I? Poo, 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 poo. I'm just looking at my saved files out here. It's not that. Normally I have this set up so that it's much smoother uh, than that. But let's try this. Let's see if this will pop up. The there we go. Here's your ES Mini, and this is just really simple. Uh, and and this is this is in using this is in using these profile levels. So you know uh, the. What I what I said to Michael is that uh, when he was asking about, hey, I don't see the TAS profile level, so where's my entry points? And in essence, he probably was asking where's support and resistance. And so, so you know, you you we're not necessarily going to see patterns. It's nice when we see patterns associated at the tops or bottoms when these profiles show up because you know where sellers and buyers are. So if you see those patterns, that's very nice out here. But the other side of it is, and and and, and maybe I misspoke just slightly out here. Look, in confirmed in in sustained uptrends out here, what will happen? is all those pullbacks will not bust through support. They're just retracements into support out here. Remember, look at the TD setup because of its breakout and breakdown levels. Well, we can also use our uh, TAS market profiles for identifying support and resistance. And you can see that pullbacks into support, I don't know if there was a topping signal back here in early February. There probably was. But all price did was pull back and tested support. That was the bottom of the profile out there. And that's really where we're at. Now, now when there is a change in trend, some type of change in trend, doesn't tell us to where. Uh, this here was a completed A to B equals CD to the downside. That was June 3rd out there. Uh, so that was really a Gartley buy pattern that had formed because of that uh, Three River morning star pattern that's these three candle sessions out here um, but you can see when price closed below the bottom of that box that was telling you okay you've got a confirmed change in trend to where it goes um, you really have to see what patterns are setting up out there so right now uh, Earl's asking the question because we're in an unfavorable seasonal cycle that should take prices lower into October and he's asking you know well result in a 10 percent I don't know what it will result in. Uh, we just simply would follow the patterns on the way down. But right now, we can't really entertain that idea because we can't entertain that idea until we see a change in trend and see that change in trend inside the ES Mini. We do see out here with regard to the uh, daily profile for the ES Mini, you can see that this is a bearish structured box, says to you and I that this is significant resistance, 30.2350. Um, so that's the level that you would be watching today because a close above that says, wow, uh, price wants to continue to move higher because it's broken above resistance. So hopefully, Earl, that answers your question most certainly the best that uh, I can do at this stage. So we're going to another hard break, folks. I'd love to hear from you, 877-927-6648, if you're listening. And it's 830 or Steve at TFNN.com. And if you're listening at 130s, thanks so much for doing that. And we'll be right back. We're going to take a look at coffee. We're going to have a little Java, see where it's headed to. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. 
The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you'd like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Tom O'Brien published the 900th issue of his weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, on July 22nd. It's amazing he started The Gold Report more than 17 years ago when gold was trading at only $252. To celebrate, we're having a special Tiger Dollar sale. Right now, you can spend only $495, and we'll give you 200 extra Tiger Dollars, so you'll end up with 695 Tiger Dollars, which is the yearly price of The Gold Report. Tiger Dollars can be used for any TFNN newsletter or service, and this offer is open to new and current subscribers. With gold making six-year highs and gold mining equities trading higher, this is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report at a dramatic savings. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This deal ends July 31st, so don't miss out. Get your Tiger Dollars and sign up today for the Gold Report 900th issue sale. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. So let's go help out uh, Ruby in the Tiger's Den, taking a look at uh, coffee. So, Ruby, when I take a look at the uh, coffee chart, and I'm going to apologize for a uh, for it looks like a bit of a delay in pricing uh, on my white background charts out here. The ones that the one that is real uh, is a in September. Is it a September contract that you're trading? I believe that is the active contract for. Uh, coffee out here. And so uh, I'm going to pull open the uh, daily time frame chart first because this is this is this is what we know when we take a look at the uh, daily time frame chart. We can see that uh, uh, from a profile standpoint, we can see that price uh, closed below the bottom of its uh, daily uh, profile, and that was on July 23rd. Remember, folks, we're just taking a look at a chart, a uh, daily chart for the ES Mini and how those, um, you know, in a sustained uptrend, those levels should hold the support. When you break through it, support has failed. Where do you go? You go to the next level. Well, the next level here for me would be just go up to the larger time frame. This would be the weekly. Those are the green horizontal lines to try to identify where the next level of support is. So with regard to coffee at this stage and looking at this chart, it says the next level of support is 97.06. Now, what I also clearly see out here is the potential of a Gartley buy pattern. Now, a Gartley buy pattern has an A to B equals CD in it. Well, the A point out here is the high, the swing point high, where we saw really a change in trend. Uh, that uh, began on July 5th. Then price moves down, and I'm going to use the uh, I'm going to use the low out here. I've got to use the same candle uh, for both the B point and the C point. 
because the low out here is going to be the trading session July 15th and the high the highest high from that point also happens to be that same candle. So now what we can see is that price hit the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. So regardless of the fact that 9706 is a weekly support level, we know that this has completed at least the 1 to 1 level of an A to B equals CD to the downside. But what's required for this pattern to complete, for this to be the Gartley buy pattern, is a bullish reversal candle, which is not what we have right now. We can see the prices towards the uh, bottom of the uh, candle. So on a daily basis, there is no confirmation of a bottom. This would suggest if we don't see a bullish candle form today, uh, Ruby, um, that price would likely extend itself down to the 1.272 expansion level. And that's at 96.40, which is just really slightly below the bottom of that uh, weekly profile out there. So no weekly uh, bullish, no daily bullish reversal signal, which is what Stevie would need to see from at least a swing trade standpoint. Maybe you're trading this intraday, and I'll get into a couple of intraday ch charts uh, for you as well. Uh, here you can see where the last breakout occurred, that red horizontal line at the 98.60 level. But again, no bullish reversal signal. You can see how this formed a top. It was with that Rhodes momentum indicator top out there. That occurred with that bearish reversal candle, the dark cloud cover, and then follow through on that very next session out there. So now let's go to a shorter term time frame. Let's go take a look at a 30 minute time frame. Again, my, you know, there's, there's slight delays in between my e signal data feed. And this chart right now, it looks like we're in sync at the 99.95 level on this 30 minute time frame chart out here. Um, and I know you've taken a, a long trade. You really want to see resistance fail. Now, I don't know if it was a 30 minute time frame or a 60 minute time frame that you're using to trade this. Well, I'll show some different time frames out here for you, but 101.05. Uh, first, <clears throat> first part of the issue is there's no bottom signal that we have here as far as a TD setup nine count on a 30 minute basis. But 101.05 is something you'd want to see from an intraday standpoint. Otherwise, that's resistance. What you don't want to see is price get up there uh, and then turn down. Uh, again, if you're not using a 30 minute chart and instead you're using a 60 minute chart, here what we'll see it's 101.65. Again, no bottoming signal that we see down here as of yet, meaning using that TD setup nine count pattern. I don't think. I have no, I don't. So let me add my uh, Rose Momentum indicator pattern here as well. It's nice if those show up on an intraday basis too. And uh, nothing there. Let me close this out. So I've got nothing there, nothing there, there on a 60-minute uh, basis. And I'll just go to one more shorter-term time frame for you uh, here on the 15-minute. Uh, Again, no, no confirmed bottom. A signal 10170, 10120 being your levels of resistance uh, that are out there. So I hope that that uh, helps you out. Uh, maybe one last thing. We go from one hour to two hour out here. So let's go uh, do that, throw that, and that way we're just really providing assistance for, for you know, uh, our our wing. Our, I'm I'm your wingman out here uh, at this moment. Again, no. No bottoming signal on a uh, two-hour uh, time frame chart either. So hopefully that analysis of the September contract for coffee uh, assists you with that uh, trade. You can also see profile levels out here. Here's your 60-minute 100.39. You're below the bottom of that box out there. So I, I would just have to say be careful. Uh, at least with regard to Stevie's tools and what they show or don't show at this moment. So no other questions that we've got out here. So let's just take a uh, tour around. Well, should we go take a look at some of the uh, equities that are moving and grooving in the uh, pre-market out here? Take, for example, Amazon, AMZN. Where is Amazon uh, headed to? Was there any signal yesterday? So right now it's trading out at 1945. Let's, uh, let's come over and take a look at the profile levels out here. Um, and uh, so the question is, the first question I posed to you was Amazon generating any signal yesterday that was giving you a little bit of an edge as to what it would likely do? That's my question. And so to answer that question, what we have to understand is, was there any kind of top that had formed, you know, a couple of weeks ago out here? And here when we pull open the daily chart, what do we know? What did we know yesterday? We knew that the top formed with that TD setup nine count. It did it on bar number eight. 
out there. So it completed that pattern. We knew that price was below Stevie's green line. That's at 2004. And what we also know is that 1906.63 is where it last broke out. 1906.63. What did we say it's trading at? It's trading at 1945. So it's trading below the breakout area. So what do we now know? If price today stays below 1906.63, we don't know whether it will or won't today. But if it does, then what that sets up inside of Amazon, well, one, it would be an A to B equals CD to the downside, but also sets up the next lower target in the 1759.49 level. But there is an A to B equals CD pattern. Uh, here we can draw that in at this stage of the uh, game, but it's well below the one, whoops, sorry, it's well below that one to one level. Um, what did we say price was? I wish I could remember everything. Uh, um, what was it? Uh, oh, shoot. I'm sorry. 1943. Let's put this back up here. So 1943, still not to the one to one A to B equals CD area, which is uh, 1917. 1943. Watch 1906. 1943. Watch 1906. That would appear to be its uh, price target. And that was in the case of Amazon. What else was out with earnings? Facebook, Facebook to the upside. Let's do the same thing. Did Facebook generate that's trading up uh, to, well, it's actually flat 200.25. So let's, but, but still just to, just to answer the question was Facebook generating any type of signals for us yesterday. And uh, this was before uh, uh, this was before the, uh, 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 the release of numbers and voila, it had confirmed a Rhodes Momentum indicator top with its dark cloud cover candle out there. The price continues lower. If there's a close below 198.37, the bottom of its daily profile, 189.94 is the target. When we come back, SNP wants to take a look at Twitter, which will do for him or her. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastery Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. 
Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Hey, uh, let's go back. We'll go back to Twitter in a moment here. I was just noticing uh, as I as I looked over to one of my screens, uh, gold, and, uh, and 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 just simply utilizing the tools that we've been talking about this morning, and and how they work. Now, quite a flush to the downside for Goldilocks. Looks like it was just really trying to take out a bunch of stops out here, right at 8:30. This is just simply a one-minute chart. Uh, you can see the uh, volume that picked up, 4,228 contracts. Now, as price was pushing lower, you can also see a hammer candle on that very next uh, session. Now, the, the one-minute chart, I'm not suggesting we use one-minute charts or anything out here, but I'm just trying to understand what went on. What it was that I was looking at when I looked over to my screen, remember, the red horizontal lines are support when we take a look at Stevie's white background chart out here, 141350. That is where price on the gold contract on a 30-minute basis had broken out. So if you're an intraday trader of gold and you saw that flush to the downside, price was just really coming back to support on a 30-minute time frame. A 30-minute time frame is going to give me a different picture than the daily time frame, for example, for gold. If we take a look at the daily time frame for gold, Stevie's been the only Paul Revere that I know that is warning you that uh, there is a significant top in place here for Goldilocks. You've got wave number seven, that's letter G on my screen. You've got the road momentum indicator. Of course, I can't really call that. I can't really use the uh, the megaphone until we see it close below 1391.70. That's the bottom of its uh, profile out there. But uh, yesterday, a perfect test of Stevie's green line. That's also the oscillator on change line. Says that there's more retracement coming. Again, a 30 minute time frame chart is gonna give us a different picture than the uh, daily chart out there. So uh, I just happened to look over on my screen just to take a look at, hey, what's going on? And, uh, uh, and okay, so let's go back to Twitter. Sorry about that, but <clears throat> hey, it is what it is. So let's go back to uh, Twitter out here, take a look at it. Let's look at its three time frames. And the question is, what the heck? Oh my goodness, I didn't realize it was the end of the show. My apologies, folks. Sorry, SNP, that I didn't get to Twitter for you. Hey, folks, have a fantastic Friday, fabulous weekend. I look forward to seeing you at the normal time on Marvelous Monday. Take care.